shifts are how long? 24 hours on, 48 hours off. Um, we run a shift. We're fortunate enough we have three guys, three full-time guys on, and with Jonah being our swing guy. So what that means is if B or C shift, if somebody wants to take, if somebody takes a day off, we can swing him off of our shift. He'll work his normal day on a different shift, and it alleviates the overtime. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to pay somebody overtime to come in. Now, with Jonah just starting in November, we're still trying to get him up to speed on the way we do things here. So right now he's not he's not he won't start swinging until the beginning of, of February. So right now we're still filling those spots with with either Tyler, myself, or uh, Brady Schaffner or Toby Westhoven, the more senior guys that have been here. We'll fill it with one of us four. That way we're not putting two brand new guys together. Sure. So, um, but that's going to change. Like I say, the first of the month, uh, these guys have been doing an exceptional job of of picking up how we do things, mm -hmm. and um, it, it'll it'll alleviate a lot. Uh, we just gave another test Saturday, hoping to pick up another swing guy because we do have a vacancy on on the roster. Um, unfortunately, nobody passed, so I don't know what we're going to do now. Uh, but we run three, two, and two, and then we run two part time people every day from eight to eight. And they help take care of uh, the non-emergency transport, which is in service from 8 to 8. Mm -hmm. We transport from any of the local hospitals to a bigger hospital in Toledo. Uh, we do that within a 50-mile radius. You were talking before, kind of like, you know, find diff more difficult getting volunteers, I guess, mm -hmm. the traditional volunteer. Um, are you guys trying to change anything up to uh, to address that? Or? Well, we, we used to have, if you were a volunteer here, you had to do uh, on-call time which uh, meant you responded from home, you grabbed one of the pickups, you followed out to the call. Uh, we used to, when I first started, you had to do 48 hours of that a month. Then they downsized it, they downed it to 36 hours a month. And now, now the only thing we require for you to be a volunteer here is you live, you know, within mm -hmm. a decent responding distance. I don't remember what the actual, uh, it used to be six miles to the courthouse, but I don't know if that's still, still the, the fact or not. Um, but now all we do is make sure that uh, people attend 75% of the training. Well. So we have uh, fire training and EMS training. Those two trainings, you know, we do every month. So you have to attend nine of the 12 of those to remain active on the department. So that's only two hours of EMS a month, two hours of fire a month. So four hours a month is all we actually require yeah. for people. But it still, it still seems like, you know, everybody's, everybody's got so much going on. Sure. You know, with the economy the way it is, people are working more than one job. Mm -hmm. You know, wives are working more, husbands are working more. So, you know, it, it's not a single income home anymore. It's dual income. And with child care costs going up and everything else, people aren't, aren't just taking the time away. Yeah. You know, and people really value that time home, and it, it's becoming more difficult. But <clears throat> the addition of putting the part-time staff on has, has really helped mm -hmm. because like right now, instead of having just three of us here, you know, we've got five of us. So yeah. at least we have, we have enough people to make a structure fire response right, right. now. Uh, we lean hard on mutual aid companies. Um, we never used to have the automatic mutual aid agreement. In. Mm -hmm. You know, it would always be, you get on scene and then you would call who you wanted, but mm -hmm. now it's set up automatic because yeah. other departments are having the same problems, sure. you know, with the exception, I think, of Ridgeville, because it doesn't matter if it's 2 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it seems like they're always rolling with 10 or 12 people. Right, yeah. Um, they're, they're very fortunate over there. Yeah. But, you know, we provide, um, you know, you could come in here, you, you personally, you could come in here and not have a single ounce of training. And we'll pay for your training. We'll pay you to go through the training. And all you have to do is, is show up and do it if you have the, the desire to do it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're offering all that stuff out there for these people. Yeah. It's just trying to find the people that have the desire to want to do right. it. Right. You know, and, that, and that's, I mean, for me it was a no-brainer. For Joe and I, I think it was a no-brainer. I mean, there's no yeah. greater job out there, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah.